Live blog for day 13. Day 13 headlines. Wozniacki is the 2018 Australian Open champion. Becomes Denmark's first major singles winner. A memorable final finishes 7 6 3 6 6 4. Marak Pavic win made in doubles major. Alcott makes it four in a row. Korda and Liang capture junior crowns. By Lee Walsh. What? A day. After 12 and a half years as a professional. Caroline Wozniacki is a Grand Slam champion at long last. Resilient, determined at an unwavering will to bend the arc of history in her favor. If ever there was a player deserving of this day, it was her. Denmark has its first major winner, while women's tennis has its 48th champion in the open era. She said it was her time, and it is. Pavic, it was really great to play in front of the Colombian fans. They made a great atmosphere. I don't know what to say, I am really happy. We still haven't lost a match with our phenomenal coach right there. I want to say thanks to him in the box, to everybody. I am really happy, and I wish I am going to come back again next year and do very good again. Maroc, I will try to make it short because mate says I always talk too much. What can I say? I am a little bit speechless. Since last year we did grow together unbelievable, had some unbelievable runs. I enjoyed every minute being with you on the court. The important person in this team is our coach John. Thank you for what you have done for us. Maroc Pavic capture doubles crown. After the heartbreak of losing last year's Wimbledon final 13-11 in the fifth set, Oliver Maroc and Mate Pavic are men's Grand Slam doubles champions at last. Beating Juan, Sebastian Cabal and Robert Farah 6-4, six, 6-4 four, six, four to capture the Australian Open title. What a year it's been, and it's only the 28th of January. For the duo who opened the season by winning in both Doha and Auckland. Caroline Wozniacki had to wait 43 majors for her first title. While Maroc broke through on his 40th appearance at a Grand Slam in 12th at the Australian Open. It's a magical night for long-awaited breakthroughs, and the pair are overcome with emotion. At 0.43 local time, Caroline Wozniacki walks into her press conference, Daphne in hand. She looks pretty right here, says the champion as she lays the trophy down on the table. Some more thoughts from your 2018 Australian Open winner. Being a new Grand Slam champion and world number one sounds pretty good. It's a dream come true. Honestly, I think, not getting asked about not winning a major again, is one of the most positive things about all of this. Daphne here is going home with me tonight. I will be cuddling her. Asterisk Maroc Pavic 1-2, Cabal, Farah. There's another trophy still to be dished out tonight, too in fact. The men's doubles final is underway with number 7 seeds Oliver Maroc and Mate Pavic taking on Juan Sebastian Cabal and Robert Farah. Both teams are bidding to win their first men's doubles Grand Slam title. Maroc and Pavic won both Doha and Auckland in the build-up, so they are rolling. Capturing 14 straight matches in a row. But inside Rod Laver Arena are a legion of Colombian fans, the pocket of yellow wouldn't be out of place at a soccer match. They'll be adding extra oomph to Cabal and Ferris' shot. I'm sure. Wozniacki stops into the Channel 7 studio, where she reflects on that moment of victory. It was a crazy match. At no point did I feel comfortable. I saw the ball go into the net and I thought, this can't be real, this can't be real. It was real. These two weeks, it's just been going my way. Sometimes you need to be a bit lucky. I could have been out in the second round. On that note, Wozniacki becomes the fifth female player to win the Australian Open having saved a match point en route. The others?
Monica Seles, 1991. Jennifer Capriati, 2002. Serena Williams, 2003. And Angelique Kerber, 2016. Halep addresses the crowd. Well, it's not easy to talk. I want to congratulate Caroline. She played amazing, all tournament. Congrats to your team, and your father. It's been a great tournament for me. I just wanted to give my best every match. Of course I am sad, but Caroline was better than me. For sure I will fight. Hopefully I will face another challenge like today. In her 43rd Grand Slam appearance, Caroline Wozniacki is a champion at last. She becomes the first ever Dane to capture a major singles crown and if a career ever deserved to be capped with a title at one of the sport's four flagship events, it was hers. And what a way to do it, in what was one of the all-time great Grand Slam finals, packed with drama, talent, athleticism and downright stubbornness. Wozniacki is the 2018 Australian Open champion. Halep gets to 15-15 after coming out on top of another energy-sapping rally. Then there's a touch of drama. Wozniacki's shot is called out, but overruled by the umpire. But the umpire is wrong and it is in, 30-15 Halep. And the world number one double faults. Her first of the match. Sheesh. Wozniacki steers a winner in behind Halep, who should have finished the point at the net. And suddenly it's championship point to the Dane, and she takes it. She's on her back. The tears are flowing. The scoreline reads 7, 6, 2, 3, 6, 6, 4. A Grand Slam winner, back to world number 1. Take a bow, Wozniacki. Asterisk Halep 6, 7, 6, 3, 4, 5, Wozniacki. Wozniacki clinches just the third hold of the set and she's one game from the title. Tactics are out the window. Game plans are out the window. This is all about the mind now for Wozniacki. Will she play the match and not the occasion? Halep 6, 7, 6, 3, 4, 4 Wozniacki asterisk. Wow. All we can do is bow down to these two and their unlimited supply of sheer determination. Wozniacki, with a strip of tape below her left knee now, plays a wonderful point to go 30-0 up. Dragging Halep out wide on the deuce before curling a backhand winner cross-court. The world number one reels her back in. Leveling it 30-30 when Wozniacki pulls off a backhand and watches it drift long. Halep has her hands on her knees after that. This is brutal. Both players are bending, but neither is breaking. One break point comes and goes for Wozniacki. But she closes on the second when a weary Halep backhand crashes into the net. Where this one goes from here is anyone's guess. Asterisk Halep 6, 7, 6, 3, 4, 3 Wozniacki. Wozniacki loses her way slightly at the start of the seventh game. Going 0-30 down when Halep tees off on a backhand return, leaving her rooted to the spot. She plucks her shovels from her bag, however, and starts digging in 0-30 becomes 30-30. Then it's Halep's turn to dish out a free point, but she takes it right back with another tasty return. Deuce big point, and it's won by Halep when Wozniacki attempts to thread a shot up the channel but catches it late. The Romanian has break point. The first serve fails to land, Wozniacki's delivery has gone completely AWOL of late, and Halep takes advantage, taking control of the rally from the return and coming out on top. She breaks. Wozniacki calls for the trainer, seems to be an issue with her knee. Asterisk Halep 6, 7, 6, 3, 2, 3 Wozniacki. The standards have dropped massively here, but that's only served to heighten the drama. It's no surprise. With the tank running on empty, both players are struggling to form thoughts. Let alone deliver forehands and backhand. Halep breaks back, and she didn't have to do a whole lot.
on we go halop six seven six three one three wozniaki asterisk a loose game from a shattered halop in wozniaki has the break back maybe just maybe winning that mini battle in the third game may have cost the romanian the war it's so so important that halop stays within striking distance here Wozniaki will, more than likely, struggle to close. This is everything she has worked for, her whole career. All the slamless questions she has fielded. It will all replay in her mind over the next few games. But if there's the cushion of daylight between them, the pressure won't quite be as severe. Asterisk Halop 6, 7, 6, 3, 1, 2 Wozniaki. Fear not, I haven't disappeared. We've just witnessed an epic game. An exhausted and hacked off Halop can be dangerous. Done with rallies, she dials the pressure up a few notches. Going after Wozniaki with some heavy ground strokes. A backhand winner gets her to 15 to 30 and then she pins a return onto the baseline which Wozniaki directs wide. Two break back points. But they're gone in a flash with two missed returns. 25% of the Danes serves have not come back tonight. Wozniaki sees one game point come and go, but she gets a second with some attacking play. Closing the net wonderfully to stab home a volley. She seems to have a lot more energy in those legs than Halep. But the Romanian bashes my suggestion away, unloading on a return to bring us back to deuce. Halep brings up three more break points but can't convert on any. Will she be made to pay? She's not. On her sixth break point of the game she gets a gift. A Wozniaki double fault wrapped with a bow. That game lasted nearly 12 minutes. And it may prove pivotal. Halop 6, 7, 6, 3, 0, 2 Wozniaki asterisk. It's advantage Wozniaki. The Dane stays tough in a tight game. Finally getting a look at breakpoint. Will she hang back, wait for Halop to do the missing? Nah. In she steps, cracking a forehand return winner past the Romanian. In 2012, after a grueling encounter. Novak Djokovic and Rafael Nadal both needed seats to get through the trophy ceremony. It might be the same today. Halep 6, 7, 6, 3 Wozniaki. Halep has had difficulty closing out since this tournament. And she finds herself in a spot of bother 15 to 40 down. She's limping ever so slightly, and her movement isn't quite as sharp as usual which makes what comes next fairly extraordinary. She fends off the first breakpoint, getting down low to steer a backhand cross-court winner. And the second when she lands a massive second serve and finishes with a forehand. Two set points come and go for Halep, the first she should have taken. Overcooking a basic mid-court forehand, and then she has to rescue another breakpoint. But when a third set point arrives, she takes it, in a rally that's rather apartment. She plays a loopy angled drop shot which Wozniaki chases down and then with the court gaping. The world number one floats in a slice giving her opponent a chance to get back but the day nets the response. Mental fatigue. Physical fatigue. We're going three. Recapping day 13. The extraordinary Dylan Alcott won a fourth straight Australian Open crown. Winning the quad wheelchair singles final out on Rod Laver Arena earlier today. He beat top seed David Wagner and had this to say. Feeling awesome. Four in a row. It's been a big couple days, big two weeks, really. Crazy two weeks. I was pretty glad I could top it off with a win. The support of Australia and the media and the press, it's just been, you know. It's like becoming normal now, the coverage, which is what I always wanted. USA's Sebastian Korda and N. Shuo Liang from Chinese Taipei took home the boys and girls. Singles titles, respectively. Now that first name may ring a bell.
Sebastian is the son of 1998 Australian Open champion Petter Korda. And talk about good stock. Peter's daughter Jessica won golf's Australian Open equivalent a few years back also. Showtime. You guys, I've already got the chills and the roof has yet to peel away from the top of Rod. Lover Arena. A light show is currently sparkling around this magnificent stage and the cast of Mamma Mia are singing, winner takes it all. Stirring stuff. We're about 15 minutes away from the players entering stage right. But before we dive head first into this the most intriguing of women's finals. Let's take a quick look back at what's already happened on an incredibly muggy day at Melbourne. Park. I would love to be in that position again, to be able to win my first major. It's one of the cool moments in sports. Both have saved match points so far. Sometimes you get lucky along the way. You need a bit of luck. They have worked so hard, both of them. Both have been to world number one. First time winning any major, the Australian Open, I'll be watching. I'm just excited for both of them because I remember how it was with me winning my first major. At Wimbledon back in 2003 and, oh my god, it rocked my world. It was the best moment of my life. Maybe. Roger Federer. It's Simona Halep's time. It's Caroline Wozniacki's time. But it can't be both of their times. Tonight, the world number one and two bid for a first major crown. Both are two-time Grand Slam finalists. Both have suffered shattering defeats. But they have picked up the pieces, even the tiniest ones, and rebuilt. Now here they are, stronger than ever. Ready to go head-to-head -head for one of tennis' most coveted prizes, an Australian Open crown.